Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss topological sort which is a very important graph concept and it is useful in many places and uh, today is the 1st of June and interestingly enough this problem is in today's problem of the day at Geeks for Geeks. So I wanted to make this video a bit more general, not uh, specifically for the problem of the day so that this particular video is helpful for you even after today's problem of the day because this concept is useful in many other places and if you know how to apply it you can solve like a variety of different problems there are very standard problems just like this one we just we just have to find the correct order but there are also many difficult problems based on topological sort and uh, they are rated around 1800 or 1900 on code forces so you will be able to solve those problems if you truly understand how do we actually do topological sort and why do we actually need it right so first of all let's discuss why do we actually need topological sort so the first question when we study any algorithm is why right why do we actually need it the first thing is you like whenever you hear a dependency graph you can associate it with topological sort so let me just write dependency graph so i believe you must have heard of this particular term dependency graph so for example you have a software right you have a software in your system or even your operating system for that matter right it's also a software so it has various packages right so one package is this the other package is this and the third package is this and these packages are actually dependent on each other and also dependent on some other external packages right there might be several packages like this right so let's say this particular package is dependent on this package right so how do we represent this let me just make a line that this particular package is a dependency right so what is this line denoting this line is denoting that only when this particular package is satisfied or this particular package is present then only i can execute this particular package right this is good enough this is a reasonable way to show this particular information again i might say that this particular package will only work when this package is present so let me just show you with the graph so i'm denoting a directed edge like this right so that that means only when this package is present this particular package will work and when this package is present this particular package will work right so this is how i'm denoting the dependency graph again another dependency might be like this right and then i can go from here to here and let's say there is a edge like this also right so you are you are actually saying let me just try to name this packages so if i have this as package a this is package b this is package c this is package d and this is package e right so we are actually trying to say that only when b is there a will occur only when c is there b will occur only when d is there c will occur and only when e is there D will occur. So if if it was only like this, there was no problem because I could have first of all have E and then from E I can have D, then from D C, then from C B, and then from B finally A. Then all the packages would be satisfied. And then at the last I am saying E will only occur when A is there, right? So this is a big problem. Why? Because you see that we have formed some kind of a loop. Why? Because to form A we need B. And then we need C, and then we need D, and then we need E, and to form E only we need A. So if we never form A, we will never be able to form E, and if we never form E, we will never be able to form A. Right? So this is some kind of loop where all the packages are depending upon like themselves. So it is just similar to a condition when you and your friend are standing in some place and you want to do a particular task. Right? So you say that if on, you will do this particular task only if your friend does. And your friend says you will do this task only when you do it, right? So they are all depending on each other, and if none of them starts, the task will never be accomplished, right? So this is a very typical scenario. So now you might argue that if we only have to find loops, right? So we are detecting a loop. We found that whenever there is a loop, that this condition is not possible, right? So whenever there is a loop, they will never be able to satisfy each other. Now you might argue, uh, like if we are only detecting some kind of loops. Why not just run a simple loop algorithm or a simple loop detecting algorithm on a graph 
and find out whether there exists a loop or not. And that is a very well valid technique to find an answer for this particular question. That if there exists a loop, definitely there will be like uh, they will not be able to satisfy each other dependencies, right? But it is only good when we want to find whether they can satisfy or not, right? So it will only give us a true or false answer. True or false answer. If there exists a loop, the answer will be false because we will never be able to satisfy the dependencies. Otherwise, the answer will be true. But topological sort, as the name suggests, sorting means like to represent the elements in certain order, right? Topological sort will help us find the correct order of elements such that if we arrange all the elements in that particular order, each element will only be executed when all of its dependencies are satisfied. So let me just erase this particular edge and the topological sort for this particular uh, like uh, series of like dependencies would be first of all we will have to process E. Then we will process D, then we will process C, and then process B, and then we will process A. So you see, whenever we are processing each element, all of its previous dependencies are already satisfied. Right. So this is what a topological sorting means. Now, the next question is, how do we actually do this uh, particular uh, thing? So we have reached to our next question, that is how. So we have understood why it is important and what does it help us in. It will help us if there exists a valid like ordering, it will help us to get that ordering such that all the elements occur only when their previous dependencies have been satisfied. Right. So now let me just try to make a similar graph as in the previous one, but uh, we'll try to make it a little bit more complex. So let's say these are some dependencies. Right. So the topmost process is depending on this particular one process. And let, I'll just write, write numbers on it in a little while. So let's say this is 2 and this is 3 and this is 4 and this is 5. Right. So you see that process 3 is actually depending on process 1. Process 4 is depending on process 1 and process 2. Process 5 is depending on process 2. Right. So there might be other extensions as well. So it might be like this. So let's say this is process 6. And this is process 7. Now the question is, how do we find a valid ordering such that we only take an element only when its previous dependencies are satisfied. So there is a very like brilliant way of finding this and it is not very difficult as well. You can just tell it by observational skills, right? So if you see this particular graph or if you see this dependency graph, whatever you can call it, what do you think will be the most optimal node to take first? So very well I can see that I cannot take 7 because I have not taken 5 yet, right? Because 5 is a dependency of 7. Similarly, I cannot take 6, right? And I cannot take any other elements like 3, 4, and 5. The only elements I can visibly take is 1 and 2, right? Why? Because 1 and 2 have their dependencies satisfied and there is no other element before it, right? So they have basically zero dependencies. So I, I can take any one of them like topological sort does not like want you to sort these elements internally as well. You can either take two first and then write one or you can take one first and then write two. The only thing is they should not have any prior dependencies. So let us first take one. Right. So let's say we have taken one. Now if you have taken one, I can safely remove this particular one from the graph. Right. Now you see the only elements free are three and 2, right, because these two elements have no prior dependencies, right. So what can we do? Which one should we take? It's totally up to you. You can take any one of them. It doesn't make a difference on the answer. Both of them will be valid answers because if I take 2, it is also having all of its dependencies satisfied. If I take 3, it, it is also having all of its dependencies satisfied. So let us say, like for now, let us say that we take 3. So we write 3 here and I remove 3. Now you see that 6 also has one dependencies coming from 4. 2 is the only element left that doesn't have any dependencies left. Right. So I can now safely write 2. It doesn't matter. You could have written 2 at the first place also. Like it would not make a difference on the answer. Both of them would be valid ways. I am repeating again. Right. So you have to take such an element so that all of its previous dependencies are satisfied. So now I remove 2 from the graph. Now I have two elements 4 and 5. Again, I can take any one of them. Let's say I have taken 5. I have taken 5. Now I have two elements which have no other dependencies that is 4 and 7. 
let's say I have taken 4. Now there are again two elements 6 and 7. So I can take 6 and 7. Right. So you see in this whole process I was able to form a valid topological order such that each element is present only when all of its previous dependencies are satisfied. Right. So let me just write, redraw it, redraw the graph again. So it was like this, there was two nodes like this and three nodes like this. So I am just drawing the first part of the graph. There, there was a dependency like this. Right. For us humans, it was very easier to see in a diagram that these two nodes, one and two, did not have any previous dependencies. Right. So we were easily taking these two nodes in as the like as the first part of our answer. So I started with one, I could have also started with two as well. But how do I actually tell my like system or my computer that these are the two nodes I want to take first? Right? These are the nodes that have no other dependencies. So I can make or maintain an array called in degree. Right? So this basically will store what are the number of dependencies that are still not satisfied for any particular node i. Let's say it is denoting in degree of i. So in degree of i will denote what are the number of dependencies that are still not satisfied for any particular node i. So for example, in degree of 1 and 2 will be initially 0, right. So this has in degree 0, let me just write it. So this has in degree currently 0, this has also has currently 0, this has currently 1 because 1 is, I have not taken 1 yet. So it's like uh, in degree is 1 and it's in degree is 2 and in degree is 1. So I have, tell, I have told you the like important definition of in degree. But if you observe, it is basically the number of edges that are arriving to that particular node. So you can calculate in degree by calculating the number of edges that are arriving to that particular node. But what is the actual meaning that we are trying to convey with the help of in degree array? We are trying to convey that these are the number of like dependencies for the particular node i that have still not been satisfied. Right. So this is what we mean. Now, since these two nodes have zero dependencies left, I can take either of them. Right. So again, like the previous time, let me just try to take one. Right. So if I have taken one, that means I can remove this particular node. But if you observe, if I remove these edges as well, right, when I am removing the node, I am also removing the edges. So let's say I have removed the first edge here, right. I will also remove this particular edge in a while, but let us discuss what happens in this particular case first, right. So you will observe when I remove this edge, the number of dependencies of this particular node will decrease by one or the number of edges arriving to this particular node will decrease by one, right. So now the dependency or the in degree will become 1 minus 1 and it will become 0, right. So you see initially I was taking all the elements with in degree 0. Now since this element has also become with the in degree 0, now I can take this element also. So now I have two choices either to take 2 or, or to take this particular element, right. So it was 3 essentially, right. So I, now I have two choices 2 or 3 because these two elements have in degree 0, right. Similarly. Since I have removed uh, 1 initially, so this particular edge should also be removed and the in degree of this particular node will become 2 minus 1 and it will become 1. Since it is not equal to 0, I cannot take this particular node yet, right. I will still have to look for other nodes whose in degree is 0, right. So basically this is what you are going to do. Let me just explain you the final part and the final algorithm quickly. So what happens is you are at a particular node i, right. You will only arrive at this particular node only when it's in degree 0, right. So if it's in degree 0, now I'll just like uh, traverse through all of these sides. So I'm writing it like this. When I'm traversing through all of its side, I like decrement the in degree of its children by 1, all of its children, right. And when this particular in degree, let's say if the in degree of the child of the child becomes 0, that means now this particular node has all of its dependencies satisfied and now I can push it into my order vector. So I will be maintaining a vector called order. So this will be maintaining my current order, right. So if the in degree of the particular child becomes 0, I can push this particular element into my order, right. So if I keep pushing these like these children into my order vector, I will have my final answer in my order vector. Now the next question is how do we actually go on traversing through the nodes? So we will use a very simple BFS. So we will be maintaining a queue, right. So in the queue, we will have to first push the elements which have their in degree initially 0, right. 
if we push all of those elements what we do next of after pushing all of these elements we just like take uh, like traverse all of their children one by one and whenever we find that after decrementing the integrity of child it becomes zero then i'll do two things i'll push it into my order vector and i'll also push it into my queue so i'll be maintaining a simple bfs call right so this is how the whole like uh, topological sorting works and it will help you find the correct order of the sorting now the next question is what if there does not exist a valid topological sort so for example in this case there was a node like this and let's say this node is depending on this particular node right so you will see in that in this particular case like no element has in degree 0 so the bfs will never actually start so if the bfs will not start this particular order vector will have no elements it will be empty now let's say there was an like element length like this right so like in this particular case this particular node has in degree 0 this will be the only element that gets pushed into the order vector and these two elements since none of them has zero dependencies they will never be pushed into the queue so my final order vector will only have this particular element right so you must have observed uh, like a simple thing with these two examples that whenever there does not exist a valid topological sort all of the elements that were present in the initial graph will never be present in the order vector right i'm repeating it again uh, if there does not exist a valid topological sorting then the order vector will never have all the elements because there will be always some elements that never have their in degree equals to zero and they never gets pushed into the order vector so at the end what you can do is you can just check whether order dot size whether order dot size is less than the number of nodes in this case there does not exist a valid topological sorting otherwise you will already have a valid ordering in the order vector right so this is the whole concept of topological sorting now let me just show you just with the help of the code so for this particular question they have given us the adjacency list and uh, like uh, according to this particular question there always exists an answer so we will not have to worry about the last part i've just told you because this is very important but uh, we don't need it actually here so what i do is i'm just maintaining an in degree vector because there are v vertices so i'm maintaining a vector of size v and i'm traversing through all the edges since they have already given us the adjacency list so i'm traversing through all the children of all the nodes and since there is a node uh, edge from i to j i'm incrementing the in degree of j right now i create a queue and i create a or order vector this will be storing my final answer right so what i do with this order vector is uh, i'm traversing through all the vertices and for each element that are that have in degree initially equals to zero i push it into my queue and i also push it into my order vector right simply now while my queue is not empty i just take the front element from the queue i pop it from the queue and for all the children of the current node i i decrement their in degree by one when i decrement their in degree i just check whether the in degree has become zero or not if their in degree has become zero that means that particular child have all of its dependencies satisfied so when it is equal to zero i push it into my queue and I push it into my order vector as well. Now at the end, I can just return my order vector. So if they like, if they also had a condition that uh, you need to check whether it it can form a valid ordering or not. So here you could have checked whether order dot size is less than n or not, or in this case less than v or not. If it was less than v, that you can have never form a valid answer. Otherwise, you can always form an answer and return it in the order vector, right? So let me just quickly submit and show you that this uh, works and this is a like correct way of solving this particular problem. So you see that it passes all the disk cases and this approach is correct. So that's it for today. I hope that you guys were able to understand what essentially is topological sort, how can we use it and how can we make the computer understand what we are seeing, right? So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video or if you were able to derive some value from this video, then don't forget to drop a like and also share your thoughts in the comments, whatever you felt about this video or this particular problem, you can share it down in the comments. As your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you're one of them, then consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.